Hello, welcome to coffee class. <laughs> yeah. Shruti, do you know how to make coffee? No. Do you know how to make coffee? I know no. how to make coffee. What about coffee? What's that? Exactly. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do any of you know what coffee is? Uh, yes. You? No? no. Ice cream? Yes. Yes, yes. yes I know. It's now you know what it is. You just said I mispronounced you to know what it is. Okay, I always think it's like pistachio ice cream. Okay, today we're going to talk about four things, although there are actually two things, but there's two of each two. Okay. Right? Yeah. That's what you say a lot? Probably I should plug this in. I plugged it and then I unplugged it. Now the plug's gone forever. <laughs> Wait, how's the plug gone forever? Oh, there it is. Yeah. This is a blindfold lecture. Did you bring your blindfold? No. Yes, I did. Okay, I did. good. Yeah. Okay, take two. So we're going to talk about four things today, and then it's, as I said, it's two things, but each each one has two parts to it. Oh. Right? I know what. Then we could do exponential learning. Is that your favorite? I think I know what one of them is. What? No, that's too hard. What? That's easy. Yeah. Okay, now what's the horsey called? Anybody? <laughs> no, it's called the horsey. <laughs> There, there's a fide master who died before you were born, and he always called it the horse. Always. He never called it a knight. Okay. And he was pretty high rated. Okay. Now, the four things we're going to talk about are the only things that matter for players of your rating. Once your rating is above 2,000, then we'll talk about other things. Until then, we'll never talk about other things. So if you're over 2,000, do this and go la, 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 then you won't, you know. They already know all this stuff, right? Yeah. Do you know what 2,000 means? Say no. Yes, I do. What? No, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, 2,000 is how old I was on my last birthday. No? Okay. What school did I go to? Old school. Very good. Trudy has been here before. <laughs> all right. So, the four things we're going to talk about are capturing pieces oh, I know. and checkmate. I know. How is that four things? I don't add very well. I know. Okay. The reason it's four things is when you're taught things by other coaches or in books or on the internet or in the sky or in your dreams. Man, good Futurama joke. Um, that's a tough Futurama reference to get, actually. Then uh, usually you're taught from your point of view. You can checkmate your opponent. You can take pieces. You can do forks. You can do pins, etc. Mainly. Mainly. Etc. Doesn't watch my stream, terrible. Okay, so actually, it's more important that you don't fall for these tricks that you know because yeah. tricks are for kids. Okay, so let me give you an example of what I mean. If I showed you this position and I said, What move should White play? You'd all be raising your hands and screaming out the answer and crying and yelling like you're doing now. <laughs> no. Okay, so what should White play? Uh, Did you see the movie Marathon Man for the two adults in the room from 1970s? Dustin Hoffman? No. Yeah. Remember, so you're doing a Marathon Man right now because you know the answer, but you're not saying it. That wasn't really part of the story of the movie, but Dustin Hoffman's in class. He doesn't say the answer because nobody knows the answer. So he just sits there. If you remember that scene, it was pretty early in the movie. But you do know the answer. Yeah. I mean, look at him. He's, he's he, 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 I, I call your bluff. What do you got? Did you fold? Wow. I fold. Wow, I thought he was going to go all in and tell me the answer. What should White play? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? You want to help? Um, bishop to um, c4. You're very close. You couldn't be closer. The problem with bishop c4 is I take it. Oh, yeah. So don't do that. Also, if I didn't take it, then why is bishop c4 good? The answer is fries. The answer is always fries. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For example, since I became a vegan, what food do I not eat anymore? Fries. Yeah. Okay. Well, I probably have had fries. Okay, so I thought everybody would yell and scream the answer, but I was wrong as usual. The yeah. answer is, Shruti, remember when I said bishop c4 was close and I said bishop... Bishop c3. Bishop c3 <laughs> here? Taking no. your own knight illegally. Ugh. I mean bishop c... 
Yeah. Bishop D3. Bishop yeah. D3. You go, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> Keep going. Go further. Try harder, Homer. Bishop B5. Okay, that's a good move. And the reason it's a good move is it wins a queen. And if you're taking notes, winning a queen is good. Yes. Okay, now if I try to move my queen, the computer won't let me. It's like, why, why can't I move my, why not? You're in check. Yeah, then I, I would be in check. It's a pin. Yeah, I can't do that. Now, actual. here's something I see in scholastic tournaments, and then I go home and cry. Okay, we have a lot of Kleenex at home, because I see it a lot. Black plays queen takes g2, and then white says, you, you can't do that, you're in check. And black's like, oh yeah, okay. Then black leaves the queen on g2 and plays king to d8 or something. What? And then the players just keep playing. Doesn't make sense. I'm like, what? Okay. Now, you may be wondering, why can't black take this? And the answer is, white takes the queen. Okay. Although, it doesn't matter, black's going to lose his queen. What did black do wrong? Black did something that I call lining up, which no other teacher calls it. They call it by some normal name. I call it by some silly name. Okay. Sometimes your pieces are lined up. There's three kinds of lines. Vertical, horizontal, and diagonal. Diagonal is too hard for this class. Okay. So actually this was diagonal. The queen and king are lined up diagonally. That means you might lose your queen. Yeah. So I wouldn't do that. And you took out your queen early. Right. Now if you play queen to d7, which I wouldn't play, but we'll play it anyway, and white does the same thing. See how it's the same thing? Yeah. Now black doesn't lose his queen. Because black can block with the pawn, or black can block with the knight. So queen c6, that's the worst. That loses the queen to this. I've seen that a lot. Now the reason I showed you this is I've seen kids and some adults who play bishop b5 and they win and they're like, yeah, I already knew that. Then they miss the same tactic because the position is different. Same tactic though. Now there's two ways to teach chess. I could show you every legal position of chess. You would remember them. Then when you played a chess game, you'd beat everybody. You're like, I know this position, I know this position, because you know all positions, right? Yeah. Then you'd win. But we can't do that because we need more atoms in the universe to do that, okay? We, we don't have enough. So then what I can do is something else. I can show you ideas. You could take that one idea and put it in a million positions. The problem is you go, yeah, 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 I know that. Then when you go play a game, somehow you forgot. I'm not sure how you forgot, but somehow you did. So here's an example of the same tactic which somebody might fall into. Oh yeah. This position, white's in check, because I said so. Also, the bishop is attacked and the pawn, but we're not talking about that today. Man, that guy had too much to drink, okay. And now, the best move is bishop to d2, but we'll play queen to d2, because I want to show you the same tactic. Okay, black takes this and black wants to win the rook, if you're taking notes, winning a rook is good. Yes. She's, she's, she's writing it down. <laughs> there you go. Okay. The only way to save the rook doesn't work, but it does save the rook. Queen c3. Mm -hmm. Now, I just showed you this tactic one minute ago, but the position was slightly different. So you might forgot, or you don't recognize it. Don't What's the winning move for black based on what I just showed you last tactic. It's the same tactic. Don't bishops b4. There's a guy who remembers. The queen and king are lined up on a diagonal just like that other king and queen were. So it's the same move. Bishop b4. Also pinning the queen to the king. The queen can't move because white would be in check. So white's going to lose his queen. Is that good for white or good for black? Black. Like, Here's why you guys make mistakes sometimes. Sometimes? Because what a lot of people do is, even though there's lots and lots of things going on on the chessboard, they only look at one. Uh -oh. Then they miss the other lots and lots of things. So here, if you only look at that, and you're like, oh, I stopped that. You did stop that, good job. And then you lost your queen because you only looked at the one thing. Now you know this tactic, because I just showed it to you. In fact, I showed it to you twice. Okay. And I could keep showing it to you the whole class, where a bishop pins a queen to a king. 
And then you're like, oh man, I lost my queen. Then when you go play a game in the other room, you shouldn't let somebody do that to you because you just saw it like five times, right? Yeah, you yeah. still will, but you shouldn't. So the, the two different tactics are you should do that, but more importantly, you shouldn't let other people do that to you. So normally when you do a tactic on the internet or in a book, it says white to play and win, you play the right move, it says correct, then you go to the next puzzle. However, then when you have the other side, they're making the same tactic and beating you. You have to see it from both sides. How do you see it from both sides? You have to look for your opponent's best moves. And that takes time of thinking. Most people don't like to think, they like to move quickly. Let's see, I won't say that's why Trump's president. So we'll just continue. Okay, <laughs> people don't like to think. Okay, so these pieces are lined up. Ah, okay. Terrible. Yeah. Okay, and when they're lined up some way, there's a good chance you can, you can win those pieces. When you line your own pieces up, you could be in trouble. Another thing I wanted to teach you that you could lose pieces is pieces that aren't defended. As you're playing chess, you move things. When you move them, they were defended, and now maybe they're not. For example, when the game of chess starts, everything's defended except the rooks. If somehow somebody magically captured your rooks, you would lose them. If they magically captured something else, you would take. If they take the knight, you can take with the rook. If they take the bishop, you can take with the queen. If they take any of your pawns, you can take with something. In some instances, more than one piece. However, as the game goes on and you start making moves, some of your things aren't protected. You should notice that. Yeah. That way when your opponent captures it, you're not surprised. So when you play d4 on move one, which I usually do, your d pawn's protected. So if somebody captures that pawn, you can capture with your queen. And they, lost, they just lost their knight. So that was silly for them. Conversely, you play e4 and the same thing happens. Now you just lose a pawn for nothing. Black wins a pawn. That pawn wasn't protected. So sometimes things are protected. Sometimes things aren't. So in this position, when black played queen before check, this isn't protected and this isn't protected. This pawn's protected a lot. The reason it's protected a lot is black attacked it twice, white defended it once, and white defended it again, not realizing he could get some other things attacked. And that's important. What's your goal in chess? to take little pieces and attack big pieces. If your big piece attacks little pieces, the little pieces don't care. This is a big piece, right? Yes. Those are the littlest pieces. If white takes those, black doesn't care. Black says, would you please take that so I can win your queen? Would you take that so I can win your queen? <laughs> so you don't want to attack little pieces with big pieces you want to attack big pieces with little pieces. For example, in this position, white has a fork. Earlier in the class, I said, sometimes pieces are lined up, vertical, horizontal, diagonal. Yes. Sometimes pieces are lined up so you can fork them, which is attack both of them. And normally they're lined up in a fork when they're on the same color. Are the bishop and knight on the same color? Yes, they're both on green. Now they're both on red. You see how they're on the same color? Yes. Okay, now you see this bishop here? That's on a dark square, and this bishop's on a white square. Those are on different colors. It's very difficult to attack pieces on different colors. It's very easy to attack pieces on the same color, and in fact, white can do it right now. What would white do? Yeah. Bishop to b5. Bishop b5 does attack the knight. Does it attack the bishop? No. no. So that's a pin, but not a fork. Okay. How do we attack both of these pieces? Again. With the pawn. With the pawn. Probably this pawn, right? Uh, no. No. You no. Can yeah, I can do it. Look, I just did it. You can. <laughs> the computer will let you. Let go of the mouse. What? Try it and let go of the mouse. I like going with the mouse. 
Okay, look, I just put batteries in this mouse. I'm not letting go of it. Okay, D5, for those of you in the audience, I'm attacking the bishop and I'm attacking the knight. It's very hard to save them both. And by very hard, I mean impossible. Also, this is the littlest piece, so it's always attacking pieces that are the same or bigger. And luckily, got to be lucky, the queen is protecting the pawn. If the queen wasn't protecting the pawn, black would just take that for free. But, yeah. but it's not free. Not free. Now, I'll tell you a funny story. About 50 years ago, before I was born, yes. there was a cartoon. Oh. And my mom, my dad, and a friend of theirs was was watching the cartoon. In the cartoon, there was a sign that said free lunch. So the guy comes and he goes for the free lunch, but he can't get it. He keeps trying. He, he does, it doesn't work. What, what he does, he can't get it. What's the moral of the story? Only the adults might know. Do you know? That there's no such thing as a free lunch? There's no such thing as a free lunch. So my mom and the friend didn't understand the cartoon. My dad said there's no free lunch. And they were like, what? <laughs> okay, so so that would be a free lunch if it wasn't defended. I can cheat a little bit. Let's play a bad move. Okay. Ugh! And then black will play a bad move. Everybody plays a bad move. And now when I play this, see how that's the same fork? Yeah. Except it's not the same fork because now there's a free lunch. Yeah. You take it. Now, when have I seen this before? Thanks for asking. No problem. You guys have seen the scholars meet before. You call it four move checkmate. Some of you go here and some of you go here. Okay, I don't know which is more appropriate for scholars meet. And then me. Checkmate. Now, the reason it's checkmate, there's a reason. Because this bishop is here. Yeah. If that bishop wasn't there, it would. black would take the queen for free. Free, free lunch. lunch. Yeah. <laughs> So for example, let's go back to move one and black plays here. Oh, and white's good. like, whatever, that's and just does it anyway, which, which, which I've seen, okay? Oh. And then he goes, mate, is that mate? No. No. No, you just take it. Right. So the reason it's, it's winning is because it's protected. So when you fork pieces, if the thing you're using to fork with isn't protected, maybe they just take it. Okay, now, if you get forked by a pawn, a knight, or a bishop, pawn, knight, bishop, you got that? Yeah. That means your pieces are on the same color. If they're not on the same color, they're not going to be forked by a pawn, knight, or bishop. I guarantee it. Pawns only attack one color. Bishops only attack one color. Knights only attack one color. This knight can go to dark squares. Now my knight can only go to light squares. So when your pieces are on the same color and they're sort of near each other, your opponent could fork them. This explains something you never understood and now you're going to understand it. When you play chess, how long does the game take before it ends? Um, does it take 10 minutes or 10 hours? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. When grandmasters play, does their game take 10 minutes? No. no. They think 10 minutes on one move. The reason is, all that stuff I'm telling you, they're thinking about all of that. You guys are thinking Arby's. Okay? And if you're vegan, don't do that. Or if, if you're like a human. If you're a dog, it's okay. Maybe. Most dogs. I went there yesterday. Yeah, was it great? You'll go there again? What'd you get? Uh, Say the roast beef. That's the funniest answer you can give. The roast beef? Yeah, it's a Seinfeld one. <laughs> Nobody? Yeah. We went to Arby's. I had the roast beef. Okay, now, actually, on The Simpsons, <laughs> one, of, one of the kids said, I'm so hungry, I could eat at Arby's. And the other kids went, no! Oh, my God, terrible. Okay, that was a great Simpsons line. Okay, so, in chess, when people teach, they teach you how to do stuff, but you also have to know how to avoid it so you don't lose. Okay, if you're playing chess and your opponent makes a move you didn't see and that move wins all of your pieces, that's not good. If they checkmate you, that's not good. So how are they going to checkmate you? When you don't castle, they're going to checkmate you here, which we already saw. 
That's the only place they're going to checkmate you. They're not going to checkmate you on the other squares the king can go to because those squares are protected a lot. When the queen goes here, that might be checkmate. When the queen goes here, that's not going to be checkmate. You got all kinds of pieces defending it. So when your opponent starts making moves and they're attacking this square a lot, that means they want to checkmate you. Now, I have a funny story. I was teaching a chess camp in Michigan. That's nothing to sneeze at. Michigan's pretty good. And they beat, they beat Michigan State yesterday, right? Or as far as you're concerned, last year. So also, even more important, Ohio State lost by like a 1,000 points to a bad team. That was very strange. It was the third biggest upset of a number two team by an unranked team in ever, in history of everything. Okay. I mean, Eastern Michigan beat them. They lost to Ohio State. Okay. Anyway, what was I saying? In our, yeah, I'm teaching a chess camp, and there were two kids, and all they did was lose. They were the world's leading authorities on losing. What? If you wanted to win, you would play those kids. Yeah. Then you'd win. Okay? So I went to the two kids, and I said, okay, here's what you're going to do. I'm going to teach you the scholar's mate. So I said, you go here, and your opponent makes some move. And you go here, and your opponent makes some move. <laughs> you go here, your opponent makes some move, then you checkmate them. And they said, okay. Now, maybe at some point in their life, they would win a game. Maybe. Yes. Right? Okay. So after I showed them that, they played each other. And this is what happened. The one kid made the other kid. And when the kid played mate, he said mate, because I just showed them the mate. And the other kid said, that's not mate. Then the kid looked for about a minute and said, okay. Then they played again, and the same thing happened. The same kid won. The other kid said, that's not mate. And then that went on for like a minute, okay. And then it happened a third time. And a friend of mine was watching, and he was like, oh. This is the tough part of being a chess teacher. I tell you stuff, you go, uh-huh, and then you don't know what I told you. Then you go back in there and the same bad stuff happens. Okay, so one kid was winning every game. He never won a game before, he's pretty happy. The other kid, he's like, I always lose, great. Still losing, okay? And when it was the scholar's mate, he still didn't know it was mate, even though it happened every 20 seconds. What? Well, the, maybe he should play golf, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> So in chess, when I show you something and you're like, yeah, yeah, I know that, then you can't let somebody do it to you. Then you don't know it. You can't know it because you do it. You have to know it because you do it and you don't let them do it to you. So for example, I show you this funny checkmate and you're like, wow, that's a funny checkmate. Yeah. Okay, and here it is. White has checkmate. The class is deathly ill. I mean silent. No. Stole that one from Family Guy. Too. I said 96. 96 me. Check me. Confusing the audience. No. Some of them are confused. I know it's me because that thing says me there. Uh, Hashtag okay. check me. Notice it's check because I said so. And if you take the night, the computer won't let you. Yeah. Right? It's illegal. Right. It's illegal because, yeah, you, yeah, because you take, yeah. So that's check me. So if I show you that checkmate, and that guy's like, 96 checkmate, I know this. Okay, now, the same people who see that checkmate, they have white in this position. And there's a guy in Michigan who's no longer in Michigan, and he's rate, he was rated 2370, he's no longer rated 2370. And when he was black, he had this position a lot. Oh. A lot, he probably had it about eight or nine times. And every time he had it, his opponents let him checkmate them. Ugh. Okay? And it's the same mate, just black doing it instead of white. So here, a grandmaster would never take this bishop, but this guy's opponents did. They're like, ooh, a free bishop. Okay? And then he would play checkmate. It's the same checkmate I just showed you. What is it? 96 checkmate. 9 to d3. 9 to d3, checkmate. That's the same checkmate. The knight's checking the king, and the queen is pinning the pawn. And it has the same hashtag. Now, I could keep showing you that checkmate like a million times. The point is, when you have the checkmate, you play it. And when your opponent has the checkmate, don't let them play it. If you let them play it, You're gonna yeah, you don't know it then. You let them do it. So a funny example that I made up a long time ago is really silly. This, this is silly. You made it up? 
this is silly. Oh, did you actually see this? No, you did not, you're never going to see this. This is silly. Oh, and then check me. And then check me. Um, what? Yeah, that's check me. Did you play it? I just did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you see a knight on d3 and a king on e1 and it's checkmate, something should hit your brain whenever that could possibly happen because you've already seen it like three times in the last minute. So now, when knight d3 is checkmate or when knight d6 is checkmate, which I can't find because I have too many things. Man, I can't find it. Where's c6? Ah, too many. Okay. So when knight d6 is checkmate, or knight c3 is checkmate, and you see the king is trapped. The king can't go anywhere. It's a smothered mate. The king is trapped. When you see checkmate, you should checkmate someone, but you shouldn't let them do it to you. So when you have black in this position, and you see this move is check, you should be very scared, because it could be mate. It turns out it is mate. And when the queen was here, that's not mate. Why not? Because there's nothing pinning the pawn. Nothing pinning the pawn. I just take the knight. Right. So when your opponent plays queen e2, you should say, I wonder why he did that. I wonder why he's lining up his queen with my king. Actually, to me, as a chess coach, it's more important that you don't let your opponent do stuff rather than you doing stuff. Because I know you can do stuff. I don't know if you can stop your opponent. Now, this explains in totality... The NBA. I've just explained it. Basketball? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Every basketball player you've ever heard of, with one exception, but you never heard of Bill Russell, so it doesn't matter. The adults maybe. But the kids haven't. The, you know them because they score a lot of points and they dunk the ball. You didn't hear of them because they play good defense. That's not why you heard of them. Okay? So you take the most famous player in basketball... LeBron James. LeBron James. They're like, ooh, LeBron James. He's with the Lakers. They must win. Okay? LeBron James is a good player, and his teammates are okay, and they score a lot of points. No, what is However, there's something they never heard of. It's called defense. They never heard of it. They never? No, I went, I said defense, and they said D what? And I said defense. They said what fence? And I said defense. They said what what? Okay, so they score a lot of points, their opponents score more points, and then they lose. They've lost every game this year. What? Yeah, because they don't play defense. Their team scores a million points. Now, the NBA doesn't care about that. They want to see points and more points. Hooray, more points. Okay? Then guys you never heard of that play good defense, you never heard of them. The same thing happens in chess. When you sacrifice all your pieces and checkmate your opponent... They put it in the newspaper and the magazine and the internet. And they say, look at that game. They sacrificed all their pieces and made it. And you're like, wow, that was great. When somebody plays good defense and stops you from doing stuff, nobody puts that in the mail. Nobody cares about that. Okay, If you do that, you'll, you'll win every game. So really boring players are usually really good. Like Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> Very boring player, but you don't checkmate him. Other players who are more exciting, Gary Kasparov, right? Yeah. He might lose every game like he does now because he's old now, so now he loses every game. Okay, truth hurts. Somebody who's really boring, like Anatoly Karpov, even though he's 67 years old, he's still good. Kasparov's 55. He was a very exciting player, so now he's no good. Right, because he can't play exciting now. He's too old. Karpov can still play boring. If you play boring and don't let people meet you, and don't let people take your pieces, you'll win. But if you're like, oh, they took my knight, oh, they took my rook, that means you're not looking for their tactics. And this tactic is checkmate, that's the worst. You could play the best chess ever, then the person checkmates you in one move, because you didn't see it. Your job as a chess player is to see what your opponent's threatening. If your opponent's threatening something, gotta stop it. Now, let's see if you're good at your job. We just talked about forever white's threatening 96 checkmate. You're black, how do you stop it? Um, pawn? Pawn? That's not really a move, that's a name of a piece. I mean, pawn something. Pawn something? 
Is it this smooth? Mm, no. No? Okay. Anybody? You can't stop me? You give up? Everybody gives up? How about knight on D goes to F6? Knight on D goes to F6. Now that's not me because I take it. Okay. Also, the move I was trying to help you with, pawn to E6. Now the bishop is defending D6. Right. So that's not me. Probably there's about nine or ten moves where there's no mate. I would say e6 is really good, knight df6 is really good, knight b6 is okay, queen c7 is okay. These are moves that stop knight d6 mate. If you don't stop knight d6 mate, then you're going to lose. For example, h6, knight d6 mate. And how do you see the mate? One is you see it, the other is you've already seen it. Yeah. And you remember. So if this ever happens to you, you can't say, I never saw that before. I just showed you like 50 times. Okay. Now, in different positions, there's different mates. It's the same mate. It's just a different position. Like there's that one. There's that mate. And then there's the one I can't find. There's that one. Don't forget the one I can't find. That's the best one. Man, if I can't find it, yeah, there's the other one. That's mate too. Right? Yeah, okay, right. so when you get checkmated or you checkmate somebody, whatever happened, that has to go in here. Then the next game you play, over the next years, you remember that. I remember things that happened dozens of years ago, especially when they were bad. Okay, when I was 12, for example, I had black in this position. And, I mean, I was 12 a long time ago, trust me. Yeah. Okay, my opponent played here. Okay, now, what's protecting the bishop? Nothing. Nothing. And it's in my territory. I have black. So I want to win that bishop. Now, our bishops are lined up. They're on the same diagonal. Terrible. So if my knight wasn't here, let's get rid of it. Bam, got rid of it. No, now, I can take his bishop for free. The computer won't let you. Well, I, if, as long as I, yeah. So I want to take his bishop. That means... Everywhere I move the knight, doesn't matter where, everywhere, okay? That's called the Johnny Cash knight. You know why? How? It's been everywhere. Exactly. Okay, so I played this move. Knight takes pawn. I'm up a pawn. Hooray for Ben. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now you might say, well, wait a minute. You just gave away your knight. Right. There's two ways to take your knight. If he takes my knight, I'll take his bishop. So he takes my knight, I take his bishop, that's fair, but I just took a pawn. If he takes my bishop, next move, he's going to take my knight, except I'm going to take with the knight. Knight takes knight. So when I play knight takes e5, I win a pawn. I'm a pawn ahead. Yeah. That tactic, which I saw when I was 12, I remember that. So now when something similar happens, I do it. And I don't play the move bishop b5 because I know I'm going to lose a pawn. Now, if you don't remember anything that ever happened ever, then it's hard to get better. Now, let's talk in terms you understand. Video games. Yes. You turn on your video game for the first time ever, and you're like, how do you play? After you've played for four months, you're pretty good. Now, your friend comes and says, I never played before. Who's better, you or your friend who never played before and you've played for four months? You're better. Yeah. Right. Now, in my scenario where you don't remember anything, I show you a chess trick. The next day you're like, you showed me what? Huh? The next day, what? So now you never get better at chess. You don't remember anything you ever saw. If you did that in video games, you play video games for four months, but you forgot. So you wake up and you're like, I forgot how to play. I've been playing for four months. I don't know anything. I just look at it like the first day I saw it. Is that what happens to you? No. No, if it did, then you wouldn't get better at video games. You get better at things because you see them over and over and over again. I can quote The Simpsons because I've seen every episode a million times. You've never even heard of The Simpsons. You can't quote anything. You got nothing. I've heard it. But you can't quote anything because you're like, I play video games. The Simpsons is secondary. I don't play video games. Why not? What's wrong with you? Girl, girls don't play video games. I play video games. I play video 
That's not true. <laughs> well, I don't mm, very confused. <laughs> girls don't play video games. I play video games. That's not true. Yeah, lots the truth of, hurts. Lots of girls play video games. I mean, if girls didn't play video games, video game producers would be quite upset. They would say, like, no, what happened to our market? No. <laughs> Where's our money? So okay. Video game producers are girls. Exactly. They would be even madder. Yeah. Right. That would mean they don't play video games either because she said so. Like, I thought I played them, but I don't. Okay. So, if you remember things that happen in your chess games, if you remember things I show you, then you're better the next time you play. Then you're like, oh, I've seen that before. Now, it's not exactly the same thing, although sometimes it is. Sometimes it is exactly the same thing. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's really close. Now, if we if we talked to uh, somebody who was better at English than I am, and we said, okay, you're better at English than I am. And they're like, what? Okay. <laughs> That's weird. How could they Is this scholar's that? mate? Uh, Notice, yeah. it looks like scholar's mate, but we played the moves A4, A5, then we did scholar's mate. Is it still scholar's mate? If your answer is probably, or yes, or maybe, that means when I show you any tactic and the position is slightly different, it's the same tactic. It's the same thing. I just put A4, A5 in. That didn't change anything. So when I show you something and it's very slightly different, you should still see it. Okay, for example, I had a game before you were born that went like this. What? Okay, and in this position, my opponent made the losing move. He took on e5. I checked. He played g3, and I checked. And I took his rook. What's that called when I attack his king and rook? Fork. Fork. So if he doesn't want to lose his rook, he has to start walking his king up the board. And in one of the, vari well, in one of the variations, if he plays king f3, this is the reverse of what I showed you before. Remember I showed you the queen and the king yes. like twice? Yes. Now it's the king and the queen, but I switched them. Yeah. Remember the king and the queen? Yeah. See, see this? See this? King and queen? Yeah, yeah, I see it. Now to me, that's the same thing. To you, it's like, I've never seen this. This is slightly different. I, I protest. Okay. In those positions, it was bishop here. In those positions. Yeah. This is slightly different. Yeah. It's not bishop there. But it is a diagonal piece on this diagonal. How do I get a diagonal piece on that diagonal that's not bishop g4? The queen. The queen. The queen. Queen h5. And that's a skewer. That wins white's queen. I guarantee it. But the king is supposed to be in front if it's a skewer. The king is in front. I mean, Th thanks for helping. <laughs> the king is in front. You're right. You, you described what was going on. And, and said that it wasn't going on. You should run for president. Okay. okay. So if the king and queen are switched, that's a pin. If the king's in front, like you said, that's a skewer. The king is in front. It's in front of the queen. Right. Now, if I move my king, probably a good idea, then I lose my queen. If I block, then I, w I don't want to shock the audience. You ready to be shocked? No. Checkmate. Oh, it's checkmate. Yeah, it is because it says so right here. You can't right, right, there, right there. Right there. Right there. You can't take it because there's a queen in the diagonal. Yeah, there's a bishop here. Oh. This bishop's here. Man, that's every every. It's all coming up Millhouse. It's great. Okay, now this position. If I said, "How do you win White's queen?" and you thought for four hours and said, "I don't know," I'm like, "I just I showed you this before," and you're like, "You didn't show me exactly that, but it was close, so I can't remember." Yeah. Slightly That's how you know some people will improve quickly and some people won't improve quickly because I show them the same position. One kid solves it in one second and one kid says, that light bulb looks a little loose. <laughs> okay. That kid's not going to be a world champion, maybe. Maybe. Maybe they'll be the world champion of light bulb fixing. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> we, need, we need that guy, too. Question? Yes. Two, actually. Yeah. Okay, so the first one is, other than watching all your previous YouTube videos, what do you recommend for help with this pattern recognition? If you do tactics on the internet and you're done with the tactic, what most people do is say, yay, I was right, or oh, I was wrong. Usually I was wrong. Yeah, right. But instead of thinking either one of those things, you should think, what was that tactic and what did I learn from that? 
and how can I take that knowledge for the next tactic? Okay, so if you get it wrong and it shows you the right answer, why is that answer right? So here, let's say you play queen f5 check and it says wrong and you're like, darn, I was wrong. And it's like, this is right. And you're like, okay, next tactic. Instead of saying that's right, next tactic, you should say, why is that right? And the answer is, as you pointed out, Trudy, it's a skewer. The king and queen are lined up. In your brain, when you see a king and queen lined up, you should look for a skewer. Because there's only a finite number of tactics. There's not trillions of different tactics. There's like 10, but there's trillions of positions yeah. that we could put those 10 tactics in. And so by doing a lot of tactics, for example, Karen has done about 45,000 the last two years, and some people do more. There's a 2,700 player whose name I don't remember, and he said he does 4,000 tactics a month, like every month forever. Wow. Okay? And so if you can solve tactics in three seconds, like he can, he could do a lot per day, right? Yes. And you get better and better and better because you see the same thing over and over and over again, as opposed to like, I never saw that before. So here's what I'm worried about when I teach a class. I show you this, then the next day, you're playing a friend of yours, and you have a position like this, and you go here. And I'm like, but you could have gone there. We looked at that yesterday. And you're like, what? Okay, man, that's a very common scenario I'd like to point out. Okay, I, I show tactics, then they happen in the games that are played later, and sometimes they see them, sometimes they don't. And occasionally, the kid says, hey, you showed us this today, and then makes the right move. And I'm like, what? That kid learned something? What's going on? Okay, and that happens. I show you things and you remember them. So if you play chess on the internet, I recommend three sites, chesskid.com, chess.com, and leechess.org. Lead chess is free. You can't pay them if you want to. You could donate. And then chess.com and chesskid.com cost money, and all of them have a lot of features. You can watch videos. Some of them are mine. You can play people. You can do tactics. You can watch grandmaster tournaments that are going on right now. The games are shown live. You can be like, ooh, that grandmaster has this move because my computer says so. <laughs> then the guy plays something else because he doesn't have his computer to cheat with. Okay? Or he plays all the computer moves. Very suspicious. No, they wouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. So the way to get better at chess is to play a lot of chess. And when you lose... And somebody says, why did you lose? Go, what? I don't, I don't remember anything. What? Now, how does that help you? If you play a chess game and the chess game ends and somebody says, what happened in that game? And you're like, I don't know. What? How are you supposed to get better the next game? If you're like, oh, I took his queen and then I was winning, but he checkmated me on the back rank. Hopefully the next game, you won't get checkmated on the back rank. Yay. I hope. And hopefully whatever you did to win that person's queen, you won't let somebody do that to you because you've already seen it. Once you see things over and over and over again, that's why I'm better than all of you. I'm old. I've seen them all a lot. I've probably played 400,000 chess games. So if there's a tactic, I've seen it. Do I remember it? Yeah. If I've seen it a thousand times, I remember it. I can't, I can't not remember it. The truth hurts, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. For example, let's do a fork. Okay. okay. Now here, white's attacking this pawn, so black protects it. And now white attacks the bishop, so black moves it away. Okay. Now white has a winning move that wins a free bishop. I've seen this many, many, many times, and this happened in a real game, and both players were international masters. One, G3. Okay, you meant G4, I assume, right? That doesn't win the bishop because I go here. Also, it's not a fork. It just attacks the bishop. Fork is when you attack two things or more. Now, in this position, if we go back a move, this bishop is protected by a queen. So if white somehow magically takes the bishop, like magically like this, black can play queen takes queen. Here, there is no magic. Nothing's protecting this. Remember I told you the Lakers weren't good? You know why? No magic. <laughs> exactly. They do magic. I know, he sort of is part owner or something? Yeah. Ugh. Remember, when, when a professional athlete wants to own your team, tell them no. Okay? 
Um, then just tell them no. Now, if they want to go in the movie theater, that's okay. All right, anybody? You. Um, I think it would be Queen to B5. Correct. Queen B5, the most correct. <laughs> notice how it attacks both of those pieces. Did you notice that? Yes. If you didn't, I just showed you. So black gets out of check somehow and loses the bishop. Now, if you did that, and you're like, yay, I did that, right? Yeah. Now, when you have the black pieces, you can't go here next game and go, oh, yeah, that's right. Darn. That's actually what I'm concerned about, is you're going to make a move, and you lose all your pieces. And I'm like, I just showed you that. And you're like, when I win pieces, I see it, but when I lose, I don't see it. And then I'm like, what? Why don't you see it now? This is very, very common. People see moves that are good for them, but they don't see the same moves that are good for their opponents. Then their opponents win. Grandmasters always look for the best moves to their opponents. Now, what secret can I tell you? The secret is checks and captures. If your opponent captures something and you say, I didn't see that, then you're going to lose a lot of pieces. If your opponent checks you and you say, I didn't see that, then you're going to get in trouble a lot. If every time in the game your opponent has a check or a capture and you saw it before they did it and you went, nah, I don't care about that, that's fine, then, then you become a good player. Nobody will ever trick you. If your opponent plays King D1 and King D1 is the winning move, I don't expect you to see that. That's just a random move that does nothing. But if your opponent puts you in check, and you're like, no, my opponent put me in check, you should see that. Yes. You should. Okay. Now, let's see who's good at counting. Whatever. It's white to move, because I said so. It is white to move. How many different moves can white play that are either a check or a capture? You should all have the same answer. I didn't ask for good moves. I said, just tell me the checks and the captures. How many? How many moves can white make that are either check or a capture? Stop yelling into your computer at home. <laughs> I have one. One? Ten. Ten? Two? Two? Three. 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 Four. No comment. No comment. Three. Three. He's very, he's like three. He's like, this other kid's terrible. Right. Three's correct. Now, I'll show you the three. That's a capture, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Queen here is a check. Right. And queen here is a check. And then that's it. Those are the checks and the captures. If you're a grandmaster and you're playing in a tournament and your opponent has a check or a capture, then you saw it could happen. You didn't say, oh, I missed that. I lose again. They don't do that. Yeah, they don't. If your opponent plays rook h2, you, you didn't see that. Nobody's playing rook h2. They play rook h2, you don't care. Yeah. If they check or capture you, you better care. Yeah. When you get better at chess, much better, then you look at threats. Threats are things that attack things so I can take them later, like g4. g4 threatens the bishop. If the bishop didn't have the g6 square, black would lose the bishop. Let's say, for example, white plays queen to d1, which is a terrible move. And black says, darn, I want to get my bishop out, but I can't. So he starts crying. Very reasonable. And he says, hmm, there's two pawns in front of my bishop this way, but there's only one pawn that way. So I'll move that pawn. Okay. Now, your bishop can get out. It's true. Okay. Spando Ballet agrees that it's true. Did anybody at home get that joke? I'm waiting for you at home to tell me. No? Even you at home didn't get it? Terrible. Okay. Now G4 wins the bishop. See how the bishop's trapped? Yeah. If somebody attacks your bishop with a pawn and you're like, oh, I didn't see that, then you're going to lose a lot of bishops. When do you lose your bishops? Often when they're on the side of the board. Did some chess coach say, put your pieces on the side of the board? No. No. They said play in the center. So when your opponent plays on the side, maybe you could trap their bishop or their knight. So a grandmaster doesn't play g6 because it traps their bishop and g4 wins the bishop. The bishop has nowhere to go. 
So you shouldn't do that. You need places for your pieces to go. The funniest is in this position. Bishop b5, nobody good plays that. And now white loses his bishop by retreating over here. The side of the board. Is that the center? No. no. Now black just keeps attacking the bishop. And white says, hey, where's my bishop go? Now, when you see that, you're like, ooh, that bishop's trapped. Now, when you go play chess, you shouldn't have your bishop trapped like that because that could happen. So before you put your bishops on the side, make sure they don't get trapped. Now, conversely, let's play a silly move for black. Okay. And then you want to play a silly move. If I was white, I would be worried about this. If I was white. Then I would go, well, that doesn't work. Because after b5, I take it. I couldn't take it in the previous position because there was a pawn defending it. That would be my analysis. I'd be like, okay, b5 doesn't work. If b5 did work, I, I wouldn't play bishop b3, because bishop a4, I'd lose my bishop. Bishops on the side of the board, knights on the side, they can get trapped. Once again, I want to reiterate, I like when you win pieces, but I like even more when you don't blunder your pieces away. Okay, and for people in my class, the 11 o'clock class, the main reason you lose is you accidentally lose pieces. You're like, oh, my rook, oh, my queen. You didn't mean to do it on purpose. It was an accident. But if you do it every game, it's hard to win. If you never do it, it's easy to win. Easy. Like, when's the last time you gave your queen away for free? Never. 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 Now, for you in this class, it ain't never. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. So when you're giving pieces away by accident, then you lose a lot. Why should you not give pieces away? You should learn tricks that win your pieces and don't let your opponents do those things. What are the tricks? Forks, skewers, pins. And when your pieces aren't protected, and as I like to say, on the fourth and fifth rank. When pieces are on the fourth and fifth rank and nobody's protecting them, Often they get captured for free. When your pieces are here, nobody's capturing them. They're too far away. Okay, so for example, here's a game I saw a long time ago. Is somebody protecting this guy? No. No. Is he in Black's territory? Yeah. yeah. Is he on the fourth and fifth rank? Yes. Okay, that's ripe for capturing. The guy with Black, he played C6, which doesn't look very threatening. And it's not. And white played e3, and that's the losing move. Menacing. <laughs> now, we lose our bishop. How does black win the bishop? Very similar to your answer. So now your mom wants to answer. Yeah? Queen to a5. Queen a5. Just yeah. like when you play queen to b5. Okay, it's check. And you take the bishop. And I saw that. I saw that game, and that's what happened. Now, if we go back a move, that queen a5 check doesn't work in this position. Let's play a silly move. Queen a5 check. How does white save his bishop? White doesn't have to lose the bishop now. White can save it. Yeah? Um, pawn to uh, h4. You're in check. Oh, yeah. You got to get out of check and save your bishop. Tough class. Mm -hmm. <gasps> the bathroom's down the hall. Knight d2? Knight where? Knight here? No. No. D, queen d2. Queen to d2, that would work. That defends your bishop. And it stops check. Also, you... Well, I thought you could. Also, you could play bishop to d2. Okay, both of those moves save your bishop. However, in the game that I showed you, white played e3, now those moves don't work. The queen doesn't defend the bishop. So it's funny, when the guy played c6, this move that didn't look very scary, he was trying to play queen a5 check and win the bishop. And he did. Why did he win the bishop? Nobody's protecting the bishop. Now in my own games, me, there's a position that I've gotten about seven times in my life. And I haven't blundered my bishop yet. When I do, then they can put me away. Okay, I've had this position a lot when I'm white. If I play bishop here, who's protecting my bishop? No one. Nobody. So watch this really complicated trick that's too hard for this class. Bishop takes check. The king takes the bishop. Knight check. See how it's check? 
The king moves, and then we take the bishop. Okay, that's good for black. Black just won a pawn and stopped white from castling. So bishop g5, that's a terrible move. I play knight f3, and then I play bishop g5, and my bishop's protected by my knight. Now if black does the exact same thing, that doesn't work, because my bishop's protected. When your pieces are protected, that's safer than when they're not protected. Now, let's look at my knights. Are they protected? Yes. Is this knight protected? Yes. If black plays knight to c6, is that knight protected? Yes. So when you move pieces out, usually they're protected, but sometimes they're not. And when they're not, sometimes your pawn takes them. You should think about that when you're playing chess. Grandmaster games go four or five hours usually. They're thinking, is my knight protected? Is my bishop protected? Does my opponent have check? And you're thinking, is it my move? What? What's going on? So your games aren't as well played, and you don't take as long. You don't think about the million things you should think about. You think about, hmm, when I get home, which video game should I play? Right? Oh. And but Shruti's not for obvious reasons. Okay. Right, Shruti? Yes. Exactly. So. All right, but what's the right answer? Fries. Fries. There's somebody <laughs> who listens. Now, if you buy a really, really expensive television, where do you buy it? Fries. Fries. So. Now you're making sense. Yeah. Some of the kids are like, what? I made the fries. There you go. So, what costs more, McDonald's fries or Fries Electronics? Fries Electronics. And I went to Fries Electronics and I was scared. I was like, do I have to mortgage my home in somebody else's home? Man. Uh, 10 plus 2 is fries. Correct. That's because the answer is always fries. Okay. And then in 20 minutes plus tax, we'll start the next class for higher ranked players like him. Some people go to both classes. You know why? Why? It's Sunday, so they have no class. Oh, yeah. You go to school on the weekdays, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, see you all later. Half point by. Uh, or do you mean half time? What? Do you mean class is done? Class is done. You're done. Here's your job. Get out. No. Right. Class so, is not done. It is. Can I ask one more question? You can. How boring a player was Bobby Fischer? Not boring at all. Okay. And in fact, when he played Spassky in 72 and won, and then stopped playing, right. he was 29. That's so he was so not boring he quit playing at 29? Well, he was insane in the membrane. Well, yeah. that too. He was just crazy. He wasn't. But, but he, he would play really good chess that was crazy and boring. He was good at both. Yeah. Yeah. He preferred not boring because unlike a lot of grandmasters today, he despised draws. He's like, draws are stupid. I want to win. Right. And grandmaster today, like, yay, I drew. I didn't lose. So. Well, you hate draws. It depends who I'm playing. I was playing you? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, no, not a draw. Yeah. Now, since I moved to Georgia, I don't offer draws anymore. I offer a draw. A draw? A draw. Oh, uh, yeah. Exactly. Would you offer a draw, fries? <laughs> exactly. That's the answer. All right, go to your rooms.